Planet Dolan. What judge made a man wear a chicken suit in public as his sentence? He was court ordered to avoid having a girlfriend for three years. There are ten of the most bizarre punishments ever thought up by judges. I'm Danger Dolan, and today I will be your narrator. Number 10. An Ohio judge by the name of Michael Ciccinetti has gotten some attention for giving people in his courtroom unusual sentences. When he had a teenage girl in court that had stiffed her cabbie on a 30 mile ride, he gave her a choice. She could do 30 days in jail, or walk 30 miles, the same distance as the cab ride. It wasn't like community service where it was just a little bit every week, no, she had to complete her 30 mile walk in 48 hours or less. She also got 4 months of probation and a $100 fine, the amount she owed the cab driver. Don't you hate it when a judge sentences you to exercise? Number 9. Judge Chickenetti strikes again, this time for a bike theft. Again, he could have sentenced the thief to jail for theft after he pled guilty, but instead he offered a community service punishment. In this case, the thief was to ride a bike. Specifically, he got 10 days of community service, which included riding a bike through various communities, promoting a local charity. Number 8. A Colorado judge also believes in making the punishment fit the crime. So he has a certain way of punishing noise polluters. If someone is found guilty of blaring their music too loud from their house or car, the judge simply forces them to listen to blaring music that they hate, presumably the same thing they're forcing others to do. Since the offenders in question are usually playing rock or hip-hop, the judge has an hour-long playlist of Barry Manilow, classical music, and Barney the Dinosaur's theme music. After the punishment, he surveys the offenders on which songs they liked, if too many people like a particular song, he takes it off the playlist. You know what would be a great punishment is if some of those songs, when you play them, it just plays the Rickroll. So every second song, it has the name of some song that you like, and you're like, oh great, and you click it, and it's just Rickroll. I'd love that. I should be a judge. Number 7. Sheila Harden got impatient waiting for a school bus to pick up a disabled child. So she drove around it, on the sidewalk. The judge in her case forced her to hold up a sign that said only an idiot would drive on the sidewalk to avoid a school bus. She was also fined 250 bucks and had her license suspended for 30 days. Number 6. Stephen Cranley has a dependent personality disorder that makes it very difficult for him to process rejection. So when his girlfriend tried to break up with him, it promptly turned into an assault case. The Canadian judge barred him from entering into an intimate relationship for three years after the fact as a sort of relationship probation until he could get his mental issues under control through counselling. Midway through his sentence, Cranley was again found guilty of assault and unlawful confinement of a woman. This time he was sentenced to 21 months in prison, followed by another three years without a girlfriend, which would be difficult to acquire in prison, I'm just saying. Number 5. You thought we were done with Judge Chickenetti? Not yet. The law. This time he had to come up with a punishment for a woman abandoning her seven-year-old dog for a week in her house that was covered in several layers of trash. Judge Chickenetti decided the best way to handle that was to make her spend time picking up trash at the city dump. Part of the court order was that she absolutely had to remain in the smelliest part of the dump. Preferably where dogs have taken shits. Especially her seven-year-old dog. Number four. Dealing with a defamation case usually involves some sort of monetary penalty. In this case, a French politician just wanted an apology. Actually, he wanted 466 apologies, sent out on the offender's Twitter account over the course of 30 days. And they were counting too. By the end of the 30 days, the man was to be fined 100 euros for every apology tweet not sent. That's more than 46,000 euros if he didn't comply at all. Number three. Daniel Morales stole 250,000 bucks from the Harris County Crime Victims Fund. So not only was he forced to pay that money back, he was also forced to hold up a sign that said exactly that. The sign labeled him as a thief, but perhaps more importantly, it had his name on it. A similarly embarrassing sign was placed in front of his house. Morales was forced to carry that sign in public for five hours every weekend over the course of six years. Number two. A Cleveland slumlord was found guilty of basically being a slumlord. Most of his buildings had severe code violations, making them borderline uninhabitable. So a judge decided to give him a taste of his own medicine, putting him under six months of house arrest in one of his own properties. It's a page right out of that old Joe Pesky movie. 
That wasn't all though. While he was out there, the court collected all of the rent payments collected on each of his properties and put them all towards building improvements to make them a bit more livable. It was also prohibited from renting or selling properties to any more future tenants without court approval. Number 1 One more hammer of justice from Judge Chickenetti. This time he was sentencing three men found guilty of soliciting sex from a prostitute for them, the punishment was dressing up in giant chicken costumes carrying signs that said no chicken ranch in Painesville, a reference to the legal brothel in Nevada. Judge Chicken Eddie's punishments were weird, but it's worth noting that his cases only see a 10% rate of repeat offenders, as compared to the national average of 75%, so something is doing's working. So you guys better be fucking careful, you're gonna be wearing the chicken suit next. So guys, what's the weirdest punishment you've ever heard of? Let us know in the comment section down below, we'll pin it forever to the top. This video was made possible by our fans over on Patreon. Thanks for your support, guys. That is it for this countdown. Have a good one!